All right, let's talk about the dodge roll. So you can take two overall styles with it. You can do the classic roll, I mean, Dark Souls, Elden Ring, that roll that, that's so fun to do. Or you can try and do the Bloodborne type of style sidestep. That's what I personally did in my own game. So either way, it's viable. But the, regardless of what style you do, you will need, I believe, at least four animations, potentially more depending on how you do it. So you will need a regular roll forward. You'll need a step back for when the player is not moving. Um, and then you will also need a lock on right and a lock on left dodge. If you want, you can do a different dodge roll for going back. That's what Elden Ring does. Um, but if you wanted, you can also use your step back for that. That's what I did with mine, just so I'd have less to animate. Now I want to go and talk about for approaches you can take for animating the dodge roll um, in terms of using the 12 principles of animation. I have Bloodborne open right here and one reason why they feel so good is because of how they use squash and stretch. So I'm just going to do some quick drawovers to illustrate the principles in action so then you can try and replicate it in your own animation. So look this is how this is his standard height. But you can tell when I press the button right here, look at this difference, the height of his crouch. Uh, it's more like that. Sorry, I'm drawing with my mouse. So it's not very good. And um, if I turn on the... Okay, see, look at this difference here when you press the button to dodge. This is why it feels so good and feels so responsive because there's this quick anticipation here. And then look, it's about 10 frames and now he's back in kind of his regular strafe. So it's short, quick, and it's a big burst of energy. Look at this squash. So the standard, the squash, and look at this stretch that he's doing here. So because the character is being very um, squashing and stretching, very malleable, it gives it a really nice game feel when you press the button. And then we can go through it again just so you can see that, look, this is the standard height. This is his regular volume. He squashes down. Look how low he gets here. And he gets fat, right? Because if you if you squash down, you have to make sure you maintain volume and um, expand that way. And then look at this nice stretch and this nice straight he has into the settle, which is like right here. So make sure you utilize squash and stretch. I also want to talk about drag and follow through and Elden Ring has a great example for this. So you'll notice on the dodge, it why does it look so beautiful to watch? Well, because they're using arcs and dragging the feet to create this beautiful, clean line. Look at that, it's going like this. I didn't quite get it accurately, but you get it. It moves nice and cleanly along an arc like that. That's why it's so pleasing to look at, and it helps the player because they're able to track more easily where their character is going when they're dodging because the animator specifically dragged the foot and made it move in a clean arc so that the player has something to track. It's very subconscious, but that's what the animator's doing. You'll see they do it the same thing here, dragging with the outer foot. Beautiful arc as he follows through, helps it to track, and then also the same thing forward. Look how the animator is intentionally leading with this foot, dragging with this one, and this one here will follow a really nice clean arc. Watch it go through. It's going straight ahead where the player is expecting to roll. And that's one reason why the dodge is so nice and works really well and so appealing is because the animator has done that again dragging the feet on the way back. You see this foot's leading, this one is dragging. And you get that nice little trail. So definitely utilize uh, drag and follow through. And one thing on timing, again, your timing can vary. You'll see that the Elden Ring one was about, I think I counted, it was like 50 frames. Um, and that is tied to my character's equip equipment weight right here. So that is a little bit more variable in Elden Ring, but compared that to like Sekiro, Sekiro's is, yeah, Sekiro's is about 20. And then Bloodborne's was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 or something like that. So again, depending on your character's weight, which is why I had that video in the beginning, you need to make sure your dodge rolls fit in with the character's personality, their weight, and also your gameplay. Uh, plans and all of that. So um, I think 
that's all I have for that. Now let me hop into Sequencer, give you some practical tips for actually animating them, and then you'll be good to go. So we are doing a new animation. Let's create a new folder. Call it dodge, dot draw, whatever you want to call it. Same thing, create our level sequence. We'll call it dodge forward. Open it up. Add the control rig, which is already in our level. Awesome. Okay, and then what I would recommend is to use your start from your idle pose and then edit from here, edit it to get your squash down for like how they did in Bloodborne, the squash and then the stretch. And it's nice how there's this grid here. You can use this body offset control, whatever you want, and do the dodge. I think I did mine. I think it was like two squares or something like that. You can play around and see. I would figure out the distance first by doing super quick. Like literally just set two keys um, and do it for, say, maybe you want your dodge roll to be like 20 frames or something. Just export it and do and see how this would feels. Just these simple, like, linear moving to the side like that. Um, like this. And just see if you like the distance first and how it plays in game before you go and animate all that stuff. Now, what I want to point out to you, which is very important, is just animating the character and stuff like this won't actually move the camera and all of that. Because this arrow here is what controls the actual character's placement. This is what root motion is. So you will need to animate this arrow. And keep in mind that the arrow controls the camera as well. So if you have like a bunch of different keys and it's like, you know, a little bit jittery and then, ooh, it goes here. Like your camera is going to be wild and it's going to look terrible. So make sure you still have some weight to it, right? Because you do want the character to have um, a nice kind of squash and stretch and timing with that. But don't have it be super crazy. As minimal amount of keys on the root control as possible so that the animation doesn't behave crazy in game. So that's what I would do. You'll need one to the right. Um, what you can do is once you animate either the one to the right or to the left, you can mirror it to get the other one. Now, I haven't found a super great way to mirror it. The way I did it for my other game was I just set a key on every single frame. And then what I did is I made sure I had all the keys selected and then I added each one to pose library because you can paste the pose mirrored to get the other one and then there's a little bit of tweaking that you'll need to do after it's pasted but that'll get you like 75% of the way there. Yeah, so go ahead and do that. That's all I have for you now.